Chiefs Kingdom, we are less than 30 subscribers away from 54,000. I want you to hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed because you're going to get informative, entertaining, and some fun Chiefs content all on the Chiefs Report in one place. So if you're not subscribed, you ain't alive, hit that subscribe button. I guarantee you will not regret it. Help us reach 54K. Appreciate y'all watching. I am your host, Jace Andrews. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about Rasheed Rice as we have somewhat of an update on the situation. We continue to get more and more information and kind of break this down and learn basically new, new things every single day. Now, today, he did release a statement on Instagram uh, saying, Today, I met with Dallas Police Department investigators regarding Saturday's accident. I take full responsibility for my part in this matter and will continue to cooperate with the necessary authorities. I sincerely apologize to everyone impacted in Saturday's incident. Obviously, this is a good first step. There is still a lot to come, um, but I'm kind of confused in some facets because he never straight up said that he was the driver. He never straight up said that he left the scene. Obviously, the initial report was that Dallas PD was looking for him. Obviously, he has now cooperated with that, and now we just kind of sit here and wait to figure out what's next, because as of right now, it's all we got. Uh, I, I don't really know from there. I will say this is not a good situation. I, I know that for a fact. Well, obviously, he's not come out and said straight up, I was the driver of the Lamborghini. Well, he also hasn't said that it wasn't him. So I think we have to just continue to get more and more information, obviously, he does admit that he was at the scene now. We had this information in somewhat of a true fashion a couple days ago. Uh, got pictures of Rasheed Rice at a family event in Dallas, Texas prior to the accident, along with uh, what was believed to be Rasheed Rice. Obviously, the similar clothing there makes you believe that that was exactly Rasheed Rice, plus the bracelet. Uh, it kind of confirms that. So, obviously, we're still kind of getting more information, and breaking this down process by process because obviously with something like this in an investigation, there are hurdles that need to be made to kind of get over each step. And right now, we're kind of on that first hurdle of you know, however long of a race this is ending up going to be. Race is a bad choice of words. But besides that, uh, TMZ did have a report talking about the cars. Uh, Rice owned the Corvette that was involved in the crash and leased the Lambo from a company called the classic lifestyle, where she was in the Lambo at the time of the crash, and according to the leasing agreement, he's the only person who was permitted to drive the car. This, according to Kyle Coker, the attorney representing, representing classic lifestyle. Obviously, it's not good either way, but there is two situations here. Rice was the driver of the Lambo in the wreck. He was the one driving it, as you said, or as you saw, excuse me, in the team's year four. He was technically the only one allowed to be the driver. Or Rice was in the car during the wreck because they say that he was there. They do not fully say if he was the driver, if he was the passenger, if that's a known thing. These are two very different options. I want to make that very clear because if he was the driver, then he is in, in some ways could be charged for criminal activity just because of that's a hit and run. Obviously, you're the guy driving recklessly. It's a race through a street in Dallas at 6 o'clock. That's not going to be good. You're in trouble with the law. If it's the opposite way and say that Rice was the, the, the passenger, well, then you're just in trouble with the, uh, the classic lifestyle, the, the, the company who rented out the Lamborghini to Rasheed Rice. And so what's next? I think that's the question that everybody continues to ask every time we get more reports and every time we tell you something new, it's always, well, what happens now? What's next? How do we get from point A to point B? If Rice was the driver during the wreck and fled the scene, that is way more serious than if somebody else was driving the Lambo. Would you rather be in trouble with the law or be in trouble with a company? Obviously, he has already agreed and said that he would pay for the Lamborghini. He would pay everything that was needed to be there. Um, but if was he the driver, was he not? That's where we're kind of sitting here thinking, okay, what, what, what's happening? Uh, do want to make sure you all know that the NFL is aware of this. Adam Schefter had this tweet yesterday saying uh, the NFL spokesperson said 
this morning that the league is monitoring the situation of the Chiefs wide receiver, Rasheed Rice. So obviously the NFL is aware of the situation. And once again, Eiler isn't good, but I think if he was the driver, there's probably some sort of suspension coming. I know that if he wasn't the driver, I can't say for certain just because technically he didn't do anything wrong by legality st standards because, well, he wasn't the one speeding. Obviously, he was there, but he wasn't the one doing it. He'd be in trouble with the company that uh, loaned him the Lamborghini. If he's the driver, that's a very different story. He's in trouble with the law, which could boil over into the NFL and, and cause some kind of hammer downs on him in that facet. Now, obviously, with this being said, he could miss some time. So in case you missed it, we do have some Rasheed Rice replacements should he miss some time. Odell Beckham Jr., Michael Gallup, Tyler Boyd is one of those. So you can go check out all the replacements that I could see being an option for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, we will have that just a couple videos back. I'll also make sure to link it in the comments and description of this video. So make sure you are checking that out. All right, coming up, is there another trade that the Chiefs could make uh, involving somebody? Obviously, another option is potentially out there, given I mentioned guys yesterday and didn't say a trade. Maybe there's somebody that could be worked out that could fit the Chiefs in a low-risk, high-reward situation. I'll tell you who that is and why I think this is the perfect time to strike in just a moment. But before that, i got to tell you about one of our amazing sponsors, Game Time. If you're looking for fast and easy way to get tickets, Game time is your place because, listen, we all know that's a hassle to get tickets nowadays with so many different ticketing apps and so many different ways to get your tickets. And really, a lot of apps are just not good. They make you go through so many taps, so many clicks. Well, guess what? With game time, you don't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event because game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events in your area. Their app is super user-friendly, and they have things like flash deals, zone deals, and their last-minute tickets are literally unmatched. You can get tickets even an hour into the event. The Royals are obviously playing right now. I'm telling you, it's going to be a good time to go check them out. Bobby Witt Jr. is a fun guy. And the White Sox are not the greatest. Uh, so you can go check that little AL Central action. So go check it out. Kauffman Stadium, obviously, with the whole news yesterday about the potential of Kansas City moving. Don't want to get too much into that. But, hey, go check out Kauffman Stadium. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful place, and the fountain in center field is something you got to see. And you can use code CHATSPORTS to get $20 off your first purchase. You're going to want to take advantage of this right now. So do yourself a favor. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, we did have an NFL trailer that I want to alert you to because this is going to be involving a team that I'm going to trade with here. Diggs to Houston. Stefan, man, the Chiefs really broke that Bills organization, didn't they? So here's what happened. Minnesota, or excuse me, uh, Buffalo. Uh, Stefan was playing in Minnesota prior. And, of course, the second round pick comes from Minnesota. So that's where I got mixed up in my brain there. But Stefan goes to Houston along with a 2025 fifth rounder and a sixth rounder in this year's draft pick. And the Bills receive a 2025 second round pick. That was the one that the Texans had traded for after they got out of the first round with the Minnesota Vikings. Even the Vikings, two first round picks. Uh, funny how Diggs is now somehow linked in Minnesota in some way. But I think the majority that I'm looking at this from a Chiefs perspective, first of all, you broke the Bills because they have nobody left. But second of all, this could potentially open up a trade for Kansas City. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, there's a plethora of wide receivers in Houston. There's one that I think would be a very good one. John Mechie III. Now, obviously, the Texans have a lot of guys, and Mechie, I think, to me, is probably the odd one out. It's him and Xavier Hutchinson. I think those two guys are ones that I can see being traded either during the offseason or right before the trade deadline in this upcoming year. So, kind of went to the lab and saw what a potential trade would look like. Well, I talked to our Texans guy, and here's kind of what I got it out uh, down to be. Mechie is still pretty young. Obviously, last year was, in theory, his rookie year because of uh, the cancer they had to deal with in his first year. Uh, obviously, taking him out there, now he's much better played this past year. But you would have to give up a 2025 conditional fourth-round pick. Uh, obviously, condition could be something around 
if the Chiefs make the Super Bowl, it's a fourth round. It, it's not a fourth round pick or something. They, you know, there's something you could put along that. And then John Mechie the third would head to Kansas City. Now, why does this make sense? Well, because John Mechie has actually been linked to Kansas City before. They hosted Mechie on a top 30 visit before he was drafted by the Houston Texans, and he was picked just 10 picks before Kansas City, in which they ultimately went with Sky Moore. So I think there is a lot of different options of why the Chiefs wanted Mechie in that time frame. Now you could potentially get him. We know Brett Veach, he likes his guys, and he continues to like his guys. He liked Patrick Mahomes since he was a freshman. Well, John Mechie, he's liked him since he was coming out of college. Now, obviously, this past year, his first year in the NFL, in theory, obviously playing, 16 receptions on 30 targets, 158 yards, 9.9 on the average in 16 games, and he was the third option for a majority of the year, if not the fourth or fifth. The big thing here, low risk, high reward, because there hasn't been a lot of him being seen, but he's a former second round pick, and there is still that talent that I think is there. I feel as though with the right mentorship, with the right guys around him, John Mechie could fit really, really well in this Chiefs offense. And now you're looking at this Texans wide receiver depth chart. First of all, it's pretty scary. Second of all, he just doesn't fit. Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Robert Woods, I feel like are all ahead of him. Now, John Mechie and Xavier Hutchinson is where they could potentially use him now. Not all teams are like the Chiefs and have seven wide receivers like the Chiefs do. The Texans last year stuck with a three wide receiver set for the majority of the year, obviously. Tank Dell getting hurt, uh, Nico Collins kind of getting a little sore in the latter part of the season caused for some Robert Woods to come in there and become a, a more priority. But John Mechie could easily be a very viable option because I don't think they need him in Houston. I don't think they do. I think that they will stick with what they did last year. They'll have the three wide receiver set, and it'll be those same three wide receivers every single down. So let's ask you. You want to trade for him? Well, then type T for trade. You're thinking, nah, Jace, I'm good. I see what you're saying, but it's not worth it. Well, then type P for pass. Get down in the comment section. Make your opinion heard. Would you like the Chiefs to trade for John Mitchell the third? Type T for trade. Type P for pass. All right, well, if you made it to the end of the video and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? You obviously like something here, so hit that subscribe button. We are literally so close to 54,000 subscribers. Hit that sub button, and I will see you in the next one, Chiefs Kingdom. For now, though, peace out. Thank you.